would have forgot. We're going to start with the standard form of a quadratic. Anyone think they know it? You said it's going to be a power of what? A squared plus B equals... Oh, you're so close. You're so close. It's Y equals AX squared plus what? B X plus C. Okay, so C is a constant. C is some number. A, B, and C are numbers that will be like placeholders in your standard form here. Um, you'll always have a Y and an X in it, but eventually we're going to solve for that X value. Um, so this is your standard form for a quadratic. Um, does anyone know when you graph a quadratic what it looks like? It's, like a U. it's a U. What's another name for that U? Um, Are you going to say one? No. A parabola. A parabola. Okay. That U-shaped curve, that's called a parabola. Okay. Um, if it ever says use your graphing calculator to sketch, we're not doing a graphing calculator. You get to just have a standard calculator in this class. So ignore the graphing calculator thing if it ever says it. Um, I'm just going to give you a sketch of what these would look like. But I'm curious if anybody knows the difference in this versus this, how the graph would change. The probability would be like upside down you Right side up you or upside down you. Do you know what changes that? The negative. the negative. This negative out in front is what flips it over. Okay, so if it's a negative in front of your x squared, it's going to flip <coughs> upside down. So this one, this is not perfectly drawn. This is just a general setup for this one. This would be a u kind of over on the left side and underneath. So starts the vertex is in that third quadrant. Um, this one ends up being something like this, okay? So that negative is going to flip it upside down. In other words, if A is positive, okay, so your A is whatever comes in front of your X squared. If A is positive, your parabola is going to open up like a smile, right? There's your smiley face. It opens up. Um, if A is negative... The parabola opens down like a frown. Okay, so that's how you can remember. Think positive, be happy, or negative, frown. Um, okay, any questions on that so far? Okay. Um, here is just a sentence for you about this guy. The axis of symmetry. And sometimes um, people just write that as AOS, axis of symmetry. Okay, if you see AOS, that's what that means. Um, this is the vertical line. What is vertical? This way, okay? The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that divides the parabola into two equal parts. Okay. So if you go back up to my pictures up top, my axis of symmetry is going to go through the vertex and it's going to cut it into like mirror images, right? The pink would map perfectly onto the green. Same thing over here. If I were to draw a line, that vertical line, that's my axis of symmetry. Okay. So the pink in these is the axis of symmetry. <clears throat> Okay, then there's a formula for the axis of symmetry, and you need to know this formula. You will use it a ton, um, so ingrain it in your brain. It is this. It is x equals, um, by the way, a vertical line is always x equals, right? So make sure you're, you're telling me a line, so make sure it starts with x equals. x equals the opposite of b, so a negative b, over... 2 times the a value. Where are their a and b values in this setup? Here's an a. Here's a b. So when you have your standard equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you're going to use those a and b values to find where that axis of symmetry falls. Okay? Okay. 
Um, the Vertex. This is, oops, the Turning Point of the Parabola. Now think about this. If I gave you a graph and my parabola looked like this and my vertex was that point right here, that is the low point, the lowest point on the graph, right? If I did it the other way, then my vertex is the highest point on the graph. Anyone know what you call the lowest point? What? Not the origin, but I know why you say that. That makes sense. Um, what's the lowest amount, if you're a business owner, the lowest amount you're allowed to pay someone is called the minimum wage, right? Um, so your lowest point is called a minimum. That looks funny. Did I spell that wrong? No, minimum. Um, the highest point is called, anybody? Maximum. The maximum. Okay, so a minimum and a maximum. That's a whole lot of information, right? Now, what do we do with that information? We're gonna apply it. So I'm gonna give you an equation and you're gonna find the axis symmetry, you're gonna find the vertex, and then we're just gonna sketch what a graph of it might look like. Um, and the sketching of the graph, it is a sketch. It's not a like, here is the perfect graph of it. You get to be a little bit just, I'll show you what I want to be specific here. Um, okay, so the axis of symmetry. There was an equation to find your axis of symmetry. What was it? Negative B over 2A. X equals a negative B over 2 times A. Okay, so look over here at our equation for number one. What is your A value in this problem? A is one. Um, you don't have to do this part of it where you write A equals B equals C equals, but if you struggle at all on this, that will be very helpful for you, okay? So A equals one, I'm gonna write that down. What's B? B isn't 10. Well, okay, B is eight, right? We're gonna make it negative when we plug it into the formula, but the B value in this setup, the B value is eight. Um, the C value in this is 15, which we're not gonna do anything with the C value yet, but eventually C comes into play also. Okay, so if I want my axis of symmetry, what is a negative B right now? A negative A. Negative B over two, what's A? one. Okay, now here's the issue. If you plug that into your calculator, negative eight divided by two times one, on this one it'll tell you the right thing because it's a one, but on any other problem where your two numbers on bottom are not a one in any way, it will be wrong, okay? This is saying that division bar kind of acts like parentheses, so you have to do this part before you divide, okay? So this is x equals negative 8 over 2, which is a negative 4. So your axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. What kind of line is x equals negative 4? What does that look like? Like this? Like this? x equals is always a vertical line, okay? So x equals negative four, I'm just gonna sketch it over here as we go, okay? X equals negative four, one, two, three, four. That's this line. And we always make the axis of symmetry dotted just so we can tell that it's the axis of symmetry. So that will be your axis of symmetry. Now, let's think about a vertex. The vertex is the turning point. So the vertex always falls on the axis of symmetry, because if you folded on that axis of symmetry, your two parts would match up perfectly, okay? How then do you suppose we could find our vertex? Do you know anything about your vertex right now? Mm 
an x value or a y value? Do you know either one of those numbers, you think? X is negative 4. So if my axis of symmetry is at x is negative 4, then my vertex is negative 4 something. How do you think we find that something? Plug it in. You're going to take your original equation, that was this guy over here, and we're going to plug in what we know. Y equals, so it's negative 4 in parentheses. That's hugely important. Negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 15. Okay. Secret for you. Not a secret at all, but let's pretend it's a secret. Your calculator will do a really good job of telling you this value. Your brain is more likely to make simple mistakes. So if I were you, I would at this point plug it into your calculator exactly how you see it, parentheses and all, okay? If you plug it into your calculator, parentheses, negative four, parentheses squared, plus eight, parentheses, negative four, parentheses, plus 15, you'll get your Y value. Um, and if you're not, let me know and I can show you how to plug that in. What do you get when you plug it in? Negative one. If you're getting negative one, you plugged it in correctly, okay? Um, you get y equals negative one, so that is the y value of your vertex. So now your vertex, negative four, negative one, is probably going to be right around here. The last thing you have to do is sketch the curve. And I don't care how wide or narrow the curve is right now, but I do care if it opens up or it opens down. What does this one do? Why does it open down? What's negative? So you can tell if it opens up or down by looking at this equation at your A value. If your A value is positive, it's going to open up. So this one goes something like this. Does that make sense? Okay, that's your process every time. Start with x equals negative b over 2a, plug that number into your equation, and then graph it. Are you ready to try another? Okay, let's look at number two. Here's your equation. What's your a value? Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So what is a? Negative 1. That negative in front of your x represents a negative 1. What's your b value? 10. And what's your c value? Negative 23. Um, again, we're not using C yet, but I just want you to get in the habit of recognizing where A, B, and C are and what they would do. Um, okay, so you're here. The formula for your axis of symmetry is X equals a negative B over 2A. What is a negative B right now? Negative 10 over 2 times what? times a negative one. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, yep. If your B value is negative in the problem, then a negative negative 10 is a positive 10. You would. Yep, that's a good question. We'll do that in eventually. Yes, our next one. Um, okay, so this is negative 10 over negative two, which is five. So your axis of symmetry, and this is very important, don't tell me your axis of symmetry is five. It's not five. Your axis of symmetry is a line, which is the line x equals five. So if you miss this part, if you leave the pink off, you lose half the point for that problem, okay? Because this is a line. You're telling me a line. You're not telling me a number. You're telling me where is this line that we're talking about. Okay, so if x is five, then my vertex, sorry, 
okay? My vertex is going to be five something because your X value is always gonna be on the axis of symmetry. So whatever you get here is always gonna go here. How do I figure out what Y is? Plug it in. So we're gonna take our original setup here. Um, okay, now. It's not gonna let me, there we go. If you're looking at your original setup, this is saying the opposite of x squared right here, okay? You leave that negative apart from the x because x is five and it's x that is squared, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say y equals the opposite of your x value squared. Notice that's gonna be different than negative five in the parentheses squared. If it was negative five in the parentheses, it'd be a positive 25. That negative outside is saying make it negative after you squared it. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like saying y equals negative x squared versus y equals negative x squared. This one you square first and then make it negative. This one you square the negative number. Are we clear on that? That is a very common mistake that happens in these. Okay, um, so if that's the case, we're going the opposite of five squared plus 10 times five minus 23. Plug that into your calculator exactly how you see it. And what do you get? It's two, this one comes out to two. So your vertex is at five, two. Okay, so let's sketch it. You have five, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Okay, so I want that to be fairly accurate where you put it, don't just randomly place it. Try to make that at the actual spot. Um, your axis of symmetry goes through that, x equals five. Does this one open up or down? Why? Whatever A is. If A is negative, that's going to open down. So it's going to look something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. I want you to try number five on your own. Or with a neighbor is great. Give that a go. Number five. Um, and if you finish five and you want to keep going, we're going to do five, eight, and nine. So if you want to keep moving, you're going to set it up. A is three. B is negative. Tw uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Sorry. Number four. No, number five. Five? Is five what I told you to do? Yeah. A equals negative one. B equals negative four. C equals negative two. So your axis of symmetry, x equals a negative b over 2 times a. If your b is negative, this is what, who asked me before, Olivia? Um, if the b value is negative and we take the opposite of the b value, what's the opposite of a negative? A positive. So this is the opposite of a negative 4, which is a positive 4. So it's positive 4 over 2 times a negative one, positive four over negative two is a negative two. So your axis of symmetry, and don't forget the x equals, x equals negative two. How do you find a vertex? You plug it in. You're getting really good at that, Luke. Good job, thank you. Um, so y equals, here's where I think it's a little tricky. It is the opposite of x squared, and x is a negative. x is negative 2. So it's the opposite of negative 2 squared. Do you see that? It's very tricky. It gets done wrong a lot. If you're not clear on that, let me know, and I will come explain it better in a minute. 
um, minus four times that negative two minus two, okay? So you wanna plug this whole thing into your calculator. When you do that, what do you get? What's the x value of your vertex? Negative two, right? This x is always this x. So negative two, what did you get here when you plugged it in? Did you plug it in? It's a positive two. Um, so negative two, two is your vertex. So if we're gonna sketch that, negative two, two, is right here. That means your axis of symmetry x equals negative 2 goes right through that. Does this one open up or down? How do you know? This negative right here is going to tell you it opens down. So you're going to go like this and like this and that's your sketch. Questions on that? Okay. Do we need to be done? No, I need to do one more with you. We'll do this one together real fast. Um, look at eight and nine, okay? What's different in eight and nine that was not the case in the first three we did? It doesn't have a C value. No B value, right? Um, because there's no X behind this. Um, seven doesn't have a C value, right? Eight and nine don't have a B value. There's nothing with an X. So what is your B value? It's zero, okay? If it's not there, it's like saying X squared plus zero X minus three, right? Zero X would go away, X squared minus three. So your A value here is one. Your B value is zero. Your C value is negative three. So when you go to do the axis of symmetry, X equals negative B over two A. What's a negative B? Zero, right? You can't take the negative of a zero. So it's just zero divided by two times one, which is zero. So your axis of symmetry is X equals zero. Where is X equals zero? What line is that? The middle one, what do we call it? It's your Y axis. If this is my coordinate plane, X equals zero is right here. So your axis of symmetry is the Y axis on that. So then you plug in zero something, um, which makes life really simple. Again, Y equals zero squared minus three. What do you get? Negative three. Um, so your Y value is a negative three. So zero, one, two, three puts your vertex here. Does this one open up or down? Up. Your A value is positive, so it's going to open up. What about this one? Number nine, up or down? Down. Okay.